understanding the basics of hormone therapy. Knowledge means less uncertainty during your journey with breast cancer. For women facing hormone therapy, the amount of research available is endless. At Breast Cancer Answers, we talk a lot about hormones, estrogen, and plenty of other things happening inside of your body. But when it comes to the science of breast cancer, there's a fine line between helpful and confusing. That's why we're breaking down the science behind the most common types of hormone therapy. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, the company who developed Breast Cancer Index, a test that may help women with ER positive, early stage breast cancer decide with their doctors whether to extend or end anti-estrogen therapy after five years. First, what are hormones? Understanding your hormones starts with understanding your endocrine system. Made up of organs such as your pancreas, ovaries, thyroid, and adrenal glands, your endocrine system releases hormones into the bloodstream and signals to other parts of the body. For example, your ovaries produce mainly estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, while your thyroid makes triiodothyronine and thyroxine, known as T3 and T4 hormones. So what do these hormones do? Well, think of them as chemical messengers that give instructions to the different cells in your body. For example, T3 and T4 hormones regulate your body temperature, metabolism, and heart rate, while estrogen from your ovaries controls your sexual development. Other tissues such as fat cells, liver, and adrenal glands also produce estrogen, which affects your cholesterol levels, bone density, and brain function. Estrogen can impact the heart, skin, and other tissues in both men and women. Hormones are responsible for lots of different things, including that awkward mustache your friend grew in eighth grade, and physical changes like puberty. So how do hormones affect cancer? Hormones bind to specific receptors found on normal cells. However, cancer cells can also contain these receptors, which drive tumor growth. We call these cancers hormone sensitive. When your body releases hormones, they flow through your bloodstream until binding to specific cell receptors. Each hormone corresponds with a different receptor, like keys made for a single lock. For example, when estrogen binds to its receptor on a breast cancer cell, it unlocks a signal for the cell to grow and multiply. Now there are two major hormones that can fuel breast cancer growth, estrogen and progesterone. When doctors say that your breast cancer is ER positive or PR positive, they're referring to one of these. In fact, 80% of all breast cancers are considered ER positive. Of these, almost 65% are also PR positive. How does hormone therapy work? Your therapy will depend on the receptor status of your breast cancer cells and whether or not you've been through menopause. Doctors will either try to prevent hormone production or block the receptors from receiving the hormones they need to grow. The first type of hormone therapy for women with ER-positive breast cancer works by blocking estrogen from reaching cancer cells. This is the purpose of selective estrogen receptor modulators, or SERMs. Tamoxifen is the most commonly used SERM, which works by binding to the estrogen receptors in breast cancer cells. Tamoxifen is a form of anti-estrogen therapy and is prescribed for both pre- and post-menopausal women. The benefit of using SERMs is that they're selective. This means that tamoxifen blocks estrogen's action specifically in breast cells while leaving estrogen's effects in other cells uninhibited. The second type of hormonal therapy centers around stopping the body from producing estrogen altogether. We call these medications aromatase inhibitors. They work by inhibiting the function of enzymes that lead to estrogen production. However, only postmenopausal women are typically prescribed these medications. But wait, you're asking. I thought women don't produce estrogen from their ovaries after menopause, so what's the point? And you're right, but other glands such as your adrenals, liver, and fatty tissue will continue producing estrogen after menopause. Aromatase inhibitors aim to suppress production of estrogen in these organs. In the end, we think it's important to be your own best advocate, and knowledge is a crucial tool for staying in control. Hormone therapy is a large topic, and there are other less common treatments for women with hormone-sensitive breast cancer. But for the sake of simplicity, we decided to focus on the two most common treatment paths, and we hope we clarified some things. As always, we encourage you to bring up any questions with your doctor. To get more practical tips for breast cancer patients, be sure to subscribe to Breast Cancer Answers here, and leave your own questions in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer your questions in future videos. Finally, we'd like to thank our sponsor, the company who developed Breast Cancer Index. To find out more about your treatment options beyond your five, just click the button and download our free list of 15 questions to go through with your doctor.